cakewalkers, and two-steppers. Syncopate your right-hand melody line. Scrap the works of J. Philip Sousa and harvest them for parts. And lay the groundwork for the composers of the future. Because it's time to talk tall to me. Welcome back to the podcast. I am Omen Said. And I am Nick McGill. Together, we are Feckless Moms. And this is Talk Tall to Me. A syncopated musical synthesis in the heady heyday of prog rock, in which I, Omen Said, and Nick, the kitten of the keys McGill, try our best to catch the swing of seminal rock band Jethro Tull. Yes, album by album, song by song, we will work our way From the origins of This Was, all the way through the final official Tull album of jtull.com, and even beyond. (laughs) That's it. That's That's it. That's lovely. Fantastic. Omen, hi. Welcome. Welcome back, Nick. Hello. Hello. Feels like it's been a while. It's been minutes. Mm. (laughs) That it has. Little little peek behind the mic here. We just recorded a, an episode of Talk Tall With Me, which you will hear before you hear this album. Ooh, spooky time. Ooh, yeah. who knows when yep. we talk about what. Sure. We could be talking right now. <laughs> so because of that, we don't have any housekeeping or anything except for one no. thing. What? What's that? One thing. So I have an I have a theory about strip cartoon that I came up while I was listening to edit last week's episode, and I told you I was going to save it for the podcast. Yeah, I do remember that. So he he refers to our our, our female character, our dancer, or or whatever, mm-hmm. almost as a strip cartoon. He wants her to be a part of a strip cartoon or his strip cartoon. Yes, S- strip cartoon. That's all I pray for or something like that it's all i ever wanted it's it's all i crave deep in my soul strip cartoon is all i'm after strip cartoon is all i crave so the thing about a strip cartoon is there's a new one each week Uh uh-huh so is he asking her to be his fling of the week every week but there, but there's a new storyline every week. Sometimes most m- most strip cartoons are are hermetically sealed in their week, and then there's completely something new the next week. Interesting. I see where you're going with this. So my my thought there is that he's just saying like, hey, let's let's have a fling, let's enjoy ourselves for for the week. That is very interesting. Now I sound huh. like you disagree. <laughs> It's not that I disagree. It's I want to expand upon that. Okay. Because a strip cartoon isn't a completely new plot every week. It's usually the same characters. It's episodic. It's always Garfield. Yeah, but it's not... He's always looking at the lasagna. But it's not the same storyline. It's not the same lasagna. Mm, isn't it? No, very few actually carry on a story through the week. It's usually just like one-offs. Right, right, right. Because it's easy to write that joke. But there's still similar themes usually. Yeah. Mm. I'm. I. I think that. I think you have the right idea. But I think that. I think it's still maybe the same individual that he just sees once a week. Okay. Okay. You know the sort of the sort of when you're in the sort of relationship phase of sex in a chat once a week. You know that. Yeah. Phase. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm. I'm not a deviant. I no one no one said you were other than yourself, Omen. Well, that's not true. But <laughs> the court papers say very very specifically that I am. <laughs> <laughs> the judge was crystal clear on that matter. <laughs> well, I think it's a great. I think it's a very very interesting point. Yeah. Did you now? Did you have any what they call evidence or research to back that up? No, Omen. This is talk told to me. What are you talking? I'm sorry, about? <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot who I was talking to. <laughs> no, I just I just think that's an aspect of. A strip cartoons that we didn't really hit on last week. Yeah. That's all. Fantastic. Thank you for <laughs> that that addendum? Question mark? Possible? That late night thoughts mm. with Nick McGill. Ooh. Mm. Did I lock the back door? 
<laughs> that's the most common late night thought. Followed very quickly by, do I actually have to pee? Mm, Can I fall wow. back asleep? <laughs> that's that's never a thought that I've had. Because you always have to pee? I always have to yeah. pee. And we don't have a back door. <gasps> oh, yeah. So I guess that supersedes. Although it'd be super weird if you did have that thought anyway. <laughs> did I lock the back door? <laughs> but you don't have a back door. Oh. But the answer would always be no. Oh, mm. terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> so, Nick, with that, what are we talking tall about this week? This week, the final, 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 final track, bonus and otherwise, off of Too Old to Rock and Roll, Too Young to Die. This is a brand new one for you, Omen. Indeed. Oh, my God. This is... Forgot that I asked you to make that stick. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not, it's not going away. And it's going to be really busy in, in the months to come. Uh, when Mm -hmm. we get into all those extra bonus tracks that I've compiled. Can't wait. Mm. This week, we are going to listen to Salamander's Ragtime. Ah. Salamander's Ragtime. Everybody make a Moscow mule and put on your poodle skirt and other generic things. I don't know. (laughs) So. (sighs) God. Just... Just drop through the, the, the decade tree and hit bran- random branches yep. on the way down. Pull out your your clay tablet to write your yeah. <laughs> your spoken right. poem on. All right, we're done. Well, why don't we have a listen to <laughs> Salamander's Ragtime or Salamander Ragtime? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> So, <laughs> Nick. Omen, that was Salamander's Ragtime. Yes, yes, it was. Thank you so much for bringing that song into my consciousness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where to begin, Nick? Well, the safe bet is musically for yes. any number of reasons. Well, let's, you know, in order to start musically, let's go back into the past. Yes, let us. And talk about the musical form of the ragtime. Yeah, I think that's a good place to start. Sure. So the ragtime was a musical form which was synthesized by African-American musicians in the late 1800s from a number of sources, including African-American rhythms, traditional rhythms, and classical Western music, classical European music. And those things were were combined to create this this new form, which also specifically had some origins in taking the works of Philip Sousa and the marches mm. and and adapting them, playing them playing them with a swing, syncopating them. Sure. And one origin of the term ragtime is that because it's swung, because it has this syncopated rhythm in the in the right hand, while the left hand is, is playing on the ones and threes, it is a ragged rhythm. It's played in ragged time. Oh, okay. That's cool. However, a more anecdotal origin of the term ragtime comes from its connection to the brothels of New Orleans, where ah. Jelly Roll Morton played, Okay, who was one of the, the famous players of ragtime. And, and ragtime is predominantly a piano form although it was there are also string band rags which have some kind of confluence with jug bands and mm-hmm. and it was also one of the big reasons why big bands started being formed because they would they would play the ragtime and then and then eventually the the bands survived and the ragtime died out and was replaced by jazz sure okay ragtime also forms the sort of basis of jazz but there is a a popular theory which may have some truth to it, or may not, that in the brothels, the ragtime music was meant to entertain the sex workers who were experiencing their menstruations. Mm, okay. And thus, it was the the time that they were, and to use a very rough expression, on their rag. Yeah. It was a traditional way of saying having their period. A fun little note about John Philip Sousa. 
l- yeah. little tie into Tull here. Very, very circuitous. Buckle in. So Monty Python, as we know, has has been yes. some inspiration to Tull. They chose one of John Philip Sousa's marches for their opener to Monty yeah. Python's Flying Circus. Because they they said they were looking for the most nonsensical, useless music ever. Yeah. So, yeah. so they went for that. <laughs> for, yeah, for I, rem- I remember Sousa. hearing that interview. I, f- I forget which of them was speaking, but he, he was like, yeah, we, we really wanted a piece of music that was about absolutely nothing. Just useless. So I was like, yeah. hey, how about this? There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Monty Python's a flying circus. Okay. So let's from that musical perspective, let's let's talk musically about this mm-hmm. song. Mm-hmm. We have the fun addition, almost harking back to the War Child era of some some ambient sounds. We have that lovely phone phone ring. Is that a is that a phone or is that like a doorbell? I took it to be like a doorbell. I guess it could be either. Okay. But it's it's uh it's lovely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's fun. It's it's more of that setting the scene and and kind of putting us in the headspace of of where this is taking place and what's actually going on. Yeah, it's very domestic. It sounds very domestic in a way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we have the guitar coming in with that that firm beat, which lasts throughout. I think it's doubled up by the bass. That sort of dum 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 dum. Yeah, the dum, uh, the acoustic. Dum, da, 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 dum. Yeah. Right? Is that the acoustic part? Because there is there's yes. a really nice acoustic in here. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the that's the underlying, I think it's a, an acoustic guitar. Okay. We have the addition of a banjo or something that sounds like a banjo at, at a certain oh, point. How did I miss that? I don't know, Nick. Very upset about that. It does a little it does a quick little run. Salamander's rag time. So we'll sit and watch the telly. Which I think is, you know, a fun reference to that kind of early, early jazz, ragtime, jug band type sure. uh, sound, which is really evocative. We have a rare we have we have a rare feature, Nick, in this song, at least for Tull. The trumpet? The female voice. Oh, well, I think that's Maddie Pryor again. Her voice is so specific. I haven't yeah. heard much of her, but I'm pretty sure I recognize her voice at this point. I think that it's got to be Maddie Pryor again from Steel Eye Span, who was also, oh gosh, what did she sing on the back of? Something on this album. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't remember which one it was, but she's on there. Salamander's right time. Nick, I'm going to I'm going to give that the stamp of probability, <laughs> the stamp of, well, the stamp of talk tall to me, to be honest. That's right. <laughs> but there's trumpet in there. We and then, yeah, and as you as you brought up, we have some lovely brass. Mm-hmm. Which, again, kind of goes back to that. You know, it it fits in with the musical references that they're making in terms of sure the Philip Sousa marches, mm-hmm. the 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 jazz, the early jazz bands, the early kind of you know there was a lot of crossover between ragtime and and jazz in the in the early days. Oh, around sure. the turn of the past century. Is it is it just me or does this feel kind of Beatles esque? I literally wrote down Sergeant Pepper's okay. sound. Yeah, Sergeant Pepper Lonely Heart. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club. Yeah. It's it's so Beatlesy, yeah. What and what's the specific song? Oh gosh, I mean, there's any number of them, but I I think you're right in Sergeant Pepper. Yeah, so the title track does have horns. Sergeant Pepper came out in '67. Mm-hmm. We're in the '70s, so I do think that this is absolutely an example of the kind of musical pastiche that our listeners have been alerting us to. Yeah, we got one, Nick. But <laughs> we found it before you. It, but is it is it coincidence or is it really like a reference there? Because I mean, they're they're looking at a ragtime sound. They're trying to replicate that, and 
You know, I, I don't know. I if think it's, it's specific. You do. I do because it's so. Both of us immediately were reminded of it. I think yeah. that it was intentional. Okay. Also, you know, the Sergeant Pepper sound is very inspired by that early kind of you know swung marching band sound. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, so there there's a lot of Venn diagram here where they where they do overlap. We have yes, my favorite kind of Venn diagram is is just a perfect sphere <laughs> in which there are no divisions. That's um, mm-hmm. yeah. It's the title of it is is. <laughs> It's it's kind of it's kind of beautiful. I see that being in like the MoMA. <laughs> <laughs> so what else do we have musically? I mean, we can. I'm sure we'll go through and find some some different moments in it. Yeah. Other other than um, the trumpet being a really nice a nice addition in there that we're not really accustomed to with Tull. I mean, I I I couldn't pick another Tull song with trumpet, but the the portion. In the the very the first time that he goes into the I really wouldn't mind yeah. that musically the background music there is is really nice. I couldn't tell you anything specifically about it because it's been too long since we listened to it. But I wrote it down that like I was I was really piqued by it. Yeah, this song has a more traditional structure than a lot of the songs we've heard recently. We have. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's do have another listen to the song just to remind us because I've I've polluted. Our brain with the Beatles. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm very very good with that. I can speak a little I'm more very, to it. I'm very polluted. I'm very so so dirty. <laughs> Get the garbage out of me. No, I really wouldn't mind. But I really wouldn't mind. Oh, I really wouldn't mind. But I really wouldn't mind. I really wouldn't mind. Okay, so yeah, the the I really wouldn't mind part the the organ back there, coupled mm-hmm. with with Martin's really nice little guitar stings. Yeah, very cool spot. Very very and, cool sound there. And very Beatles referential. I mean, mm. I whatever Martin is doing to his guitar, whatever. I mean, he is a bit like a chameleon. For never ever having listened to rock and roll, <laughs> he doesn't have to. He doesn't. He his his claims are that he does. He he has never listened to rock and roll. That's it's slightly exaggerated, but. Slightly exaggerated, but <laughs> I I imagine him more like a bloodhound or a or a psychic, where they just you know they bring they bring him a washcloth that was that was once in the same room as Paul McCartney, and they're like, yeah. "Go get it, boy!" Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so yeah, delightful music, yeah. really. Yeah, something that we I mean, a style that we've never really heard from Tull, and they they do it very well. It's not one of yeah, those of like like oh this was a curious choice and we kind of sit through it. I feel like we we did hear that once or twice a couple maybe a year ago at this point, a couple a couple yeah. albums ago that it was like okay, I can I can see what they're going for, but I also see why they didn't carry through with it. Well, and I think that part of the part of the difference is in their early days when they were playing around with some of these styles, it was like, well, let's see if we can pull this off. Mm, not quite. Yeah, it didn't, we'll didn't it. work. Yeah, yeah. And this is at this point the band is so good, mm. and they're all such accomplished musicians that they could play any style that they wanted. I think so. Yeah, you know, perfectly. Yeah, and they and so they have chosen to do this style, and they choose to not do it again. Not because they not because it didn't work, because it obviously works great, but because it was like, well, that, yeah, that was the fun thing that we wanted to do that day. Mm-hmm. It's music. Musical wordplay and and we're done. Also, I could imagine this working really well on stage, like in in the context of the of the musical. Mm. Yeah, it's very it's very theatrical. Yep, yep. It's bouncy. It's light. It's a different sound. So immediately the ear picks up and it's like, oh, what's what's going on here? What's this? It's got some fun, accented rhythms. Mm-hmm. You know, even just that opening with the guitar. Dun, 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 dun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you can imagine how visuals and movement might go along with that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it fits it fits to the idea of choreography very well. Exactly. Not, and not just humans moving, but I, I see like stage pieces moving too. And lights. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Red, I'm... purple, orange, back to normal. Or, or just red, 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 red. I 
I'm glad you articulated that thought that I had in my brain. Oh, sorry. So, Nick, (laughs) shall we dive into the lyrics here? I mean, we can't dance around them forever. Can we? Let's talk. Can we dance around them forever? <laughs> Actually, you know now what? that I, I think about I it, I think this is a wonderful opportunity for us to destigmatize menstruation. Okay. Yes, I think that I I approve of that. I support that. I like that. Let's let's talk about the 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 period. I'll be maybe. back in a half an hour. <laughs> so, menstruation is something that all mammals experience. Humans are mammals. Correct. So far, so good. And, so, so, and that's the podcast. <laughs> and thank you. And so, you know, most women experience this at some point in their lives. And it's part of the it's part of the, the beautiful dance of fertility. It is the um, the walls of the uterus shedding their fertile lining, their fertile lining so that they can get a new fertile lining the, for the next bit. Come on back next week to menstruation is a mitzvah. And we will talk about (gasps) elephant menstruation. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And you know what? Menstruation is a mitzvah because without it, none of us would be here, would we? True. True fact. So let's all, let's all send, let's send our thankful menstruation missives out into the world. Yeah. Oh, we just missed, we just missed Valentine's Day by a week. Bummer. (laughs) And (laughs) I know, sad. However, in human culture... Female menstruation has been often surrounded with taboo. Well, yeah. I mean, the human body is to be shamed. Thank you, Catholic Church. Well, and anything having to do with women is to be shamed. Women are are to be ashamed of their existence and only to be used as chattel. Thank you, patriarchy. And so women who have the audacity to inhabit physical forms. I mean, how know, dare they, frankly? How How dare they? And also, how dare they, says the Catholic Church and the patriarchy, not have the reality of their physical form match up with the patriarchy's expectation of them? Yeah. And how dare they expect their being able to bring life into the world be subsidized by the government? Exactly. Lots of issues to unpack here. I mean, really, Nick, I, I consider myself a feminist. Okay. And I think that. You know, there's there's plenty that we could talk about regarding the historic bad things <laughs> that women have faced throughout the ages. Maybe that will be our next podcast. Historic I, bad things I don't by think, the feckless moms. <laughs> I don't think we could get into much more in this episode. I think we've covered a good okay. a, a, a good chunk. So <laughs> thank you. Mm. Now, as we hinted, mm-hmm. uh, or as we sort of lightly touched on earlier. The term ragtime has a whether whether or not the term actually comes from this, it does have a popular association. Right. And so saying salamanders ragtime, I think it's quite obvious. Right. It's it's it is the return of Sally Salamander. She didn't just leave him and never show up again. She didn't ghost him. Or this him. is some alternate world in which <gasps> right, know, the right. singer is having a relationship with Salamander. Maybe this is a, a, a fantasy of Ray's, but even his fantasies are, are lame. and Are stymied. And, and he's, still, he's still a victim. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you know, well, but let's say, let's say, let's take the simplest version. The singer is having a relationship with Salamander, mm. who is a woman. Mm-hmm. And if we take the top of the song... The kettle's on, the milkman's been and gone. He's setting the say, setting the mood. The kettle's on, the milkman's been and gone. It's late morning. Late morning. Interruption, the only plausible interruption for a romantic tete-a-tete has been, has been and gone in the form of the milkman. Right. He's preparing tea in anticipation of Salamander coming over. Right, tea, the sexiest of all hot beverages. Oh, oh give me that Earl Grey, baby. <laughs> and... Salamanders coming round for some. Salamanders coming round the sun. For some, some what, Nick? Presumably tea, because the kettle's on, so. Mm-hmm. And what goes better with tea than sexual intercourse? Well, lest we let our minds jump there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. I haven't seen her now for about a month. It's always the same. She gives me the runaround. I haven't seen her now for about a month. 
It's always the same. Gives me the runaround. How does she give him the runaround? Salamander's ragtime. Rag yeah. And the the note, I haven't seen her now for about a month. Yeah. She comes around at this time every month. So she's really just, she, is she stringing him along? She clearly doesn't want this, but why does she keep coming back? She just likes his tea? I don't know. Well, so here we have the conflict of the reality with the, the male, the male narrative. Because mm-hmm. it could be the reality of it let's let's say that we have we have an implied consensual sexual relationship between these two individuals okay you know implied to us the listener right let's take it at, let's take it at that okay we are also given the information in a in a bit of a roundabout coded way that every time they get together presumably for the sex she says no no i can't because it is my time of the month right so it seems that the the singer's interpretation is that that is her giving him the runaround. Oh no, I can't. I'm making an excuse because you see, I'm I'm bleeding from my uterus. Right, but why? What's the point of the relationship then? It doesn't seem like it's anything more. And I guess we just don't have enough information here. But it doesn't seem like it's anything more than than a, a sexual relationship or a desired sexual relationship. And. Right, and this is why I say that there's the conflict between the, the attention between the the quote unquote reality of the situation and the male version of the reality. Gotcha. Because it could be, you know, what's Salamander's perspective? Right. Yeah. I mean, maybe they do get together sometimes and and have the sex, and maybe it just so happens, you know, everyone's bodies are different, everyone's schedules are different. Yeah. Maybe it just so happens that often when they see each other. She is experiencing her menstruation. And maybe they, maybe you're, like you said, they do have sex sometimes, but for what sticks out in his mind is the times when he, when, when her visit results in frustration. Exactly. So that, that's, that's a good point in his point of view is, is like, maybe they have great times together playing chess or having sex or drinking tea or, or whatever. But to him, the 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 thing that sticks out is always like god she's always she's she's always on the rag as it were as it were and maybe she isn't interested in a sexual relationship and is using you know this as an excuse because right you know that's a potentially that's a, maybe she's just not interested in right. she knows that that is a, a get out of get out of sex free card and that's on him for expecting that yeah Granted, this was mid seventies, so I'm sure there was a, a a mental mindset there that oh, this fit bird is coming over to drink tea. So obviously, we're going to have sex. Exactly right. Well, unfortunately, Nick, I don't think that that attitude has been was left in the 1970s. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a pretty certain it's alive and well. Fair enough. I'm, I'm pretty yeah. certain all the tea swilling, chess playing American young men <laughs> who are around now have a similar perspective. All three of them. <laughs> Both of them. They should get together. <laughs> yeah. There will be no ragtime there. So to pass the time, we have innuendo of them playing chess. He moves his bishop to her to the, her queen's front door. She mm. lost her diary on the bus, forgot to keep the score. I cunningly suggest a game of chess. It is the game I like to play the best. I move my bishop to her queen's front door. She lost her diary on the bus, forgot to keep the scars. What is that? Is that her tracking her menstruation? Oh, could be. Right? Well, let's see. Let's go back to the chess game for a minute okay. for a moment. What does he mean by move his bishop? <sighs> his his one-eyed bishop. His yeah, that. Yep. It's a penis. Obscenely shaped. Yeah. Right. Used to play so, chess, yeah. She lost her diary on the bus. She has to go. Forgot to keep the score. Hmm. No, I don't think that's saying that she has to go. I think that's that's some some form of excuse there. She lost her diary on the bus, forgot to keep the score. I think those are 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 part of the same idea, whatever that idea is. Uh, the, starting with a chess game? 
Yeah, because the score, I mean, e even there is no scoring in chess, like they're playing a game. So, so there's, it feels like the score belongs to that. I think that they're, I, I think they're somewhat separate. I think that the chess game is, is in reference to his attempt at some sort of a sexual maneuver, ah, okay. or a sexualized physical maneuver. And then she lost her diary on the bus, forgot to keep the score. Are See, they read to me as the kind of generic deflections that women are forced people, to make. Because because as because society has taught them not to not to be direct because with their desires because no doesn't mean no yeah yeah hashtag consent yeah I, you know I'm actually giving a little chat to some of my college students about consent tomorrow maybe I will play this song hey maybe I won't yeah they'll probably be horrified not not at the content but at the music. Yeah, <laughs> at the fact that it's Jethro. This Tull. is the worst K-pop song I've <laughs> ever heard. Yes, you're, 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 all of your students are Bugs Bunny, apparently. <laughs> so then we go back into the chorus. Yep. Salamanders ragtime. So we'll sit in and watch the telly. This is the the alternative to sex. Turning both my knees to jelly. He's still very attracted to her. Salamanders ragtime. <laughs> So we'll sit in and watch the telly Turning both my knees to jelly But I really wouldn't mind And then he says, but I really wouldn't mind Yeah, he says that one, two, three, four, five, six times Seems like he's, he really, he really wouldn't mind And what would he not mind, Nick? Chess, no, sex 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 even though his date has the audacity to be experiencing her biology yeah and this is the thing that i find so kind of revealing about this song and you know you you pointed out justly that this is a product of the 1970s and it's all a bit tongue-in-cheek so you know I'm, i don't i'm not trying to hold ian to account for this but i think it does reveal the kind of the hegemony of the male perspective in our culture, you know, that like what is set up as is he says, let's have sex. And she says, no, I'm on my period. And he says, that's all, that's all right. I don't care. Yeah. I would do it anyway. And it's like, well, actually, that's not the freaking point. Yeah. The point is she doesn't want to. Right. You idiot. Yeah. It's a two way street. Yeah. It's a two way street to sex down. <laughs> and you have to be going both ways at the same time. Oh, yeah. It's, it's very complex. It's, yeah. it's more of a roundabout, really. Mm. And the last tiny little three-line verse before we get into repetition. Take an aspirin, fall asleep. I can't touch her for a three-day week, but I really wouldn't mind. Take an aspirin, fall asleep. I can't touch her for a three-day week, but I really wouldn't mind. Yeah. Can't touch her for a three-day week. That makes it seem like, yeah, it, it's a process that lasts three days, but it feels like a week. Yeah. Oh, woe is me. I still wouldn't mind, but how dare her? She still won't let me. Yeah. No sex for three days. I may as well die. I'll dry up. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I. <sighs> and take an aspirin, fall asleep. Is that referring to Salamander? It could be her or it could be him left aching. Oh, my. Yeah. It, I, I think it could go either way. I initially thought of it as her, but as soon as you asked that, it, 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 it kind of tweaked the different idea. It, it could go either way, I think. You know, initially when listening to this, when we first got to the, but I really wouldn't mind, I was like, oh man, that's, you know, that's, that's a little icky. That's a, well, it's a you know, it's just a from the icky, like, yeah. that, that it's wheedling, you know, he's like, oh, hey, yeah, but we could. Anyway. Yeah. But. When you get through to the end of the song and it's just that repeated over and over and over again, it almost becomes a pastiche of itself. It's almost like it gets into the into the level of the absurd, you know, where where the woman is constantly being like, no, I really don't want to have sex. No, yeah. I really don't want to have sex. And he's like, no, but I wouldn't mind. I don't mind. Let's do it. I don't mind. Hey, why yeah. don't we do it? Yeah. So is is I mean, it's, and it's impossible to know because I think historically we've seen that that Ian has dedicated himself to being unknowable. 
yes, and that he has in the past made certain creative decisions that for after having made them, he then says, oh, it, it, it was a character. Oh, it was actually meant to be the mother of all concept albums. Being he, he, he gives himself enough of a, mm, of an, of an escape, of an opaque cloud around this, that he can make a claim after the fact. And this is, this is all conjecture. I'm, I'm not saying that, that he does this to, to cover his own ass. It, I, I just think it's, it's kind of convenient. But you're but you're saying that the tinted windows on the tall lyric mobile would not pass New York State inspection. Oh, it's way too dark. Way too dark. Way too dark. Yeah. So I, I don't know for sure, but is this Ian's opinion? Is this the opinion of the character that is Ray Lamas? You know, it's it's well, and difficult. Nick, what is art for? No, genuinely, what is it for? I oh no. I wasn't prepared for that. that what question. is art for except to explore things, situations, concepts, mm-hmm. realities mm-hmm. that we cannot or are difficult to explore otherwise? Sure. Sure. It can be it can be a matter of catharsis. It can be a matter of satire and forcing us to see things that are really going on around us at but are are easy enough to to overlook and like the origins of ragtime itself it probably doesn't have one point of genesis mm-hmm. it probably is a synthesis of ian's observations in the world around him of his observation of his own behavior of his critique of the world and you know a general kind of pastiche of of human behavior and biology yeah, it is. I think there is, regardless of the original intention of this song, which again, we we really just can't know because I doubt we'll ever get a clear answer out of Ian on this if anybody actually remembers this song. Regardless of the original intention, this couldn't be, this could be a teaching moment, you know? Use it, music can evolve coming from the era that it was created in. You know, it doesn't, mm. It's it can be a living thing. And I think... In terms of something like this, it it does not hurt. And in fact, it it serves a better purpose to use it in that way. And it's a great song. And it's also like musically, it's such a good song. Yeah. I think I think we should rewrite the lyrics to this. I don't know. I think I think there's something valuable. Like you're saying, no, yeah. you know, it's yeah. He, it, the song isn't my girlfriend came over and she didn't want to have sex, but we did it anyway. Because I'm a man. Virile. Right. It's, I'm respecting the desires and wishes of my female companion. I'm going to bitch about it <laughs> right, but for a week exactly. and a half, but... <laughs> but I'm going to press the issue as far as I can within the bounds of politeness. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I think it's it's fun. It It is. It is. I think it is... Honestly, I think it's less problematic than some of the other songs that we've heard that have oh, really absolutely. like given us issue. And they're not they're not often. They're they're not many. But but I, I think I think there is something that can be there's some value to this song. And if nothing else, it gives us a chance to talk about the magical phenomenon of menstruation. The human body really is, and I'm being 100% genuine here, the human body is an amazing machine. The chamber of secrets. <laughs> it is. That's what we call it in this house. The prisoner of Azkaban. Oh, that's that's Ray Lamas in this song, yeah. That's, that's the bishop. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. The prisoner of Azkaban. Oh! <laughs> All right, I think that is it for this song. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to stop this before any more sexual Harry Potter puns. Oh, yeah. There are too many out there already. I don't think we need any more. No, I really wouldn't mind. I really wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. All right. So, Omen. Nick, what are we listening to next week? Do you know? I do, kind of. We're starting a new album. We are starting heavy horses no we are starting songs from the wood that we are 
the start of a supposed triptych of country folk albums, a very special album for me. Like this was this was my first first album that I really like. I I wore out the tape on this one literally. And the whole, I mean, the, this whole section of albums that we're entering is very very meaningful for us. Very yes, and and I'm sure for so many of our listeners. So needless to say, we are we are excited beyond reason yes to be getting into this next series of albums yeah so we are starting songs from the wood with the titular track songs from the wood until next week nick until the next three-day week until the next three-day week if you don't want to write us a review you don't have to we can just we can hang out yeah but to be honest i really wouldn't mind Until then, I am Nick McGill. I am Omen Sade. We are Feckless Momes. And this is Talk Tell to Me. Welcome back to the 23rd Annual Chess Championship here in Waltwith, sir. I'm here with David Brancaccio. Thank you, Edmund Tootlebum. And we are here for the championship between Anderson and Salamander. Yes, and it's already getting hot in here. The expectations are high, maybe too high. Anderson is coming strong out of the gate. He's moving that pawn aggressively two paces forward. He sure is. And, I, you know, I saw him polishing his pawns in the back room for a full hour. He, I, I, I heard he likes to do that. He likes to, to center himself, get his mind in the game, keep everything bright and shiny and focused. Nope. Oh, just seeing this now, uh, Salamander is blocking with her castle. Blocking with her castle. Yes, it's a block. It's a block to the pawn. Thank, Tiny little pawn. Thank goodness. And Anderson retorts very quickly, it seems without even thinking, by pulling out his knight and coming right up into the castle really getting close up there he's trying to batter down the door uh we're seeing the classic crisscross black white the bishop block coming from salamander over there she's moved her queen behind behind an impenetrable wall of icy cold pawn blockage i believe the last time we saw that was karamazov in 76 that's right that's right and An oh, really anderson, a shriveling performance anderson does not look happy does not oh my he's flipped the table he's flipped the table he's pacing back and forth there's pawns everywhere there's what's that this is this what he's shouting what's he screaming he's what is that T talk 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 told to me talk told to me is a Oh my goodness! Oh, I'm sorry. This We're gonna have to bleep all this out. Where normally we censor this, but this is live. He has said this is a language warning. Talk tell to me is a proud member of the Factless Moms Audio Network. Mother, I'm I'm sorry. I'm so sorry to hear that.